Do you want to make your relationship a fair proof? Whether you are recovering from experience of cheating and infidelity, or you are entering a relationship for the first time, I'm sure you are one person who wants to make your relationship a fair proof. So if you are saying yes to this, then this video is for you. If you are also a life coach, you are a coaching practitioner and you're helping clients in the area of relationships, this video is perfect for you. Today's toolkit is a fair proof. You can snag this toolkit for free, but only for a limited time offer. So make sure that you subscribe also to this channel because we're still on a runway of our 100 Days Life Coaching Toolkit Mastery Series where you can learn, use, and master a toolkit that will enable you to start, grow, and scale your coaching business. So let's dive in for today's conversation, and that is a fair proof. Day 51 it is. Thank you so much for being in a journey. We are now entering our second half of our 100 Days Life Coaching Toolkit Mastery Series. I am Master Coach A and you are joining me in this channel. And in this episode, in this season, we are diving into mastering a toolkit because toolkit is our best friend in life coaching. And in this series, in this part of the series, I am helping you dive into relationship coaching as relationship coaching is one one of the most lucrative niche in coaching. It is lucrative not because, not just because a lot of people are willing to pay for a relationship coach, but because there's a lot of people that are struggling and wanting to find their space in a beautiful relationship. And oftentimes, we find clients who are struggling getting the relationship they deserve because they are focused on making their relationship a fair proof and they want their mate to be secured. They want to make sure that the person in front of them or the person they're saying yes is someone who will not be tempted. And if you are one person who's been into betrayal, infidelity, and cheating, I'm sure you know how painful it is to recover. And so for today's toolkit, there are going to be signs of, not wonder, of course, just signs of infidelity. And just in case, okay, you discover and there's proof of affair, then what you will do and how can you recover, that's part of the toolkit. And so just, just make sure that you download the toolkit. And if you need processing, if you need help, then get in touch with us at 0917586 or visit us at the Cup Coffee Republic, our coaching hub, which is located at Pioneer Center Compound along Pine Road, Corner Brixton's and United Streets Capitol, Pasig City. You don't have to make an appointment. You can drop, you can come in and you can visit us anytime from Monday, uh, from Saturday to Thursday from 10 a.m. to 10 PM. So you, if you are meeting me for the first time, I am Master Coach A. I am the creator and the founder of Life Coach Philippines. And so if you are one person also is interested to dive into the profession of life coaching, and if you want to become a professional certified life coach, then get in touch with us and we will journey with you. Now, the toolkit covers, just as I said, the, tool, the toolkit covers the signs of infidelity or, ha or having an affair and your road to recovery. But, and so in this moment, in this episode, I'd like to dive into how to make your relationship affair proof. And it means that whether you are in a relationship right now, you are married, you are in a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship, or you are about to enter a relationship, I'm sure you are one person who wants to make your relationship a fair proof. Give me a yes in the comment if you are saying yes to this, okay? Give me a yes. Give me a yes if you are saying Yes, I want to make my relationship, I want my marriage to be a fair proof. Now, I have a bad news and a good news for you. The bad news is, well, you cannot make your marriage, your relationship a fair proof. Nah, that's the bad news. Why? Because it takes two to tango. You have your mate, you have your husband, you have your wife, you have your spouse who's part of the relationship. Therefore, you cannot make the marriage, the relationship, a fair proof. But the good news is you can make yourself a fair proof. 
it is you, yourself, whom you can make a fair proof. So what are the conditions? What are the parameters? What are the tenets that would allow you to be a fair proof? Of course, okay, you probably have heard over and over, a lot of gurus and practitioners will tell you self-care, self-love, self-compassion, and all of these things are true. But the first ground rules of making yourself a fair proof is this. Make your expectations right. And what does it mean? Make sure that you are expecting for the best, but you are ready for the worst. Okay? So that's the first tenet. You know that you love yourself, you take care of yourself, you have self-compassion, and you are entering in a relationship where you can expect the best, but you are to be prepared for the worst. And it means that your spouse, your partner, you yourself included, can always, or I would say, can still fall into temptations. The reality of temptations, the spirit of temptations, the reality of demonic forces that can steal and kill your relationship is always true. That's what I'm saying. It's always true. It will always be there. And there will be ground rules for us to have a relationship that is hazard-free, that is safe, but Make sure that you know it can happen. And because you know it can happen, then and again, the first, as the first ground rule say, you expect for the best, but you are prepared for the worst. It means that you will enter into a relationship that you know you can be of equal. Now, let me dive deeper on what it means to be co-equal. It means that you are entering in a relationship that you are equally full, you are equally ready, you are, you are equally in a position to start a relationship. In life coaching, we say this is relationship leadership. So you are making yourself, okay, you are putting yourself in a leadership position that you are defining how you respond in a way that is worthy of the relationship that you deserve. It means that you don't allow, you don't allow your partner to define who you are. You don't allow your partner to define the parameters of your marriage, of your relationship without you truly consenting or agreeing to it. Oftentimes, we come into a relationship and because we are so in love and we want the partner, our partners to be secured of our love and we want them to feel comfortable and you know it's magical we just submit to what it is because we don't want to lose the person and if you do that then you are not expecting the best because you are just saying okay whatever it is let it be okay so i probably you've probably heard of whatever it is let it be and let's just cross the bridge when we get there that is not expecting the best and preparing for the worst you expect yourself to be ready for the relationship you expect the partner to be ready for the relationship, but you are prepared to recover yourself if anything happens. Number two, if you want to a fair proof your relationship, you need to understand, okay, you need to understand that commitment takes two to tango. And when say takes two to tango, it means that you are committed to yourself as you are committed to your partner. You are committed to make yourself a priority you are committed to respect yourself you are committed to take care of yourself in as much as you are committed to respect and to take care of your partner oftentimes infidelity affairs happen because we ourselves yes i'm not gonna say it is right or you make it right okay but what i'm saying here listen up is this okay oftentimes the aggressor the erring partner are able or is able to do it because the other partner, the so-called victim, allows it to happen. You are in a position to identify the person suited and fitted for you. And at the onset, there is intuition, there is this gut feel, and there is this just like a wisdom that we know for sure that there is something wrong that is happening. Yesterday, in episode 50, I talk about the emotional cheating. And oftentimes, we are, when I say we, like generally, people knows if there is something emotionally happening. And yet, 
we allowed it to progress and we just say, let God be God, let there be God, I will pray, I will continue to serve, I will continue to love the person. But then again, okay, you've got to commit, you've got to commit to yourself first and then to your partner next. Number three, if you want to affair proof your marriage, affair proof your relationship, you must be willing, okay, to make regular conversations about the things that bothers you, about the things that you are not comfortable, you must be willing to take the risk of seemingly offending your partner or you must be willing to take the shot of having a conversation on issues that are not comfortable for you. And when you do this, okay, as a couple, as a partner, you must be willing to honestly accept the things that needs correction that needs some discipline needs some tweaking in your end you must be willing to take it on your fence and say that one is my accountability that one is my responsibility and i am willing to change or i you would be willing to say that one is not on me that one is on you and you need to pick up the mat and do your share in the relationship number four if you want to make your marriage your relationship a fair proof Giving back, or I would say serving other relationship would do you get good. What does it mean? Oftentimes when we're in love, when we are building a relationship, whether a boyfriend, girlfriend relationship, or we're getting into marriage, we kind of isolate ourselves and say it's me and him or her and the world against the world. It's that it means that just all, all about us. Now, if you want to affair proof your marriage or your relationship, giving back or serving other relationship is a healthy, like, is a healthy ground, building a healthy ground or cultivating a healthy ground for you to grow together. Because when you are taking care of other relationship, be it in teaching, be it in giving coaching, be it in giving best practices, practices, sharing what works with you, what works in your relationship. It means that you are allowing the good to flow from your relationship to another relationship. It's great that other people see you together, but it's also great that people are learning from you together. And if, if you want to a fair proof your relationship, your romantic relationship. The fifth will seal it all. Well, actually, this should be the first. So it should be the priority at all. Or I would say without the fifth, it would not complete. The fifth is dedicate your relationship to the one who created the best relationship. And that's God. Without God in the picture, you would always be having that void for a third party. There is a third party in a relationship, and that space is for God. So if you take away God in the relationship, if you take God in the equation, that third space will be void, and that third space will be taken over by the snatching forces, by the stealer, by the killer, and you will have a lot of troubles protecting your relationship. So there you go. If you need help, if you need recovery support, if you need some guidance, or I would say you just want to have a conversation on this area of relationship coaching, then give us a call at 0917 This is Master Coach A, and I'll see you again tomorrow for Day 52. Have a great day, everyone.